9 o'clock. It is Monday, October 24, 2016, I'm calling by the County Commission for Order. We were supposed to have a preacher from St. Stephen's down at Memphis Church here today. He did not come. So the sheriff is going to do our invocation today. So please stay in the back and please stay in the place. Lord, we just come to you with humble hearts, Lord. We just thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the sunrise that you've given us today. We just thank you for this group of people that have come to help make our county great again. Lord, we just ask you to be with them as they make their decisions. We ask you to be with all of our first responders that are out in the field today as they're making their calls. And Lord, we just ask you to be with our military as they try to keep our country safe. Be with us as we make our decisions. And all this we ask for you. Amen. 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 First thing on the agenda this morning is the recognition of minutes from the October 10, 2016 Department of County Commission report. So, any questions, any minutes on that? Number two, correction of minutes to consider and approve correction of a clerical error in the minutes of the court's 9 26 16 meeting to the item 15 part of the county law enforcement complex project to correctly. The clear commission will be a vote as a vote against rather than in favor of. A motion made to authorize the part of county commission purchasing agent to go out for conducting sale bids in such project. Um, Scott, so I don't know if you want to add anything to this. I was just requesting that the minutes on November or September 26th be updated. It was incorrectly stated. I voted in favor. And I mentioned it during the last minutes. But I guess part of the procedure, and you guys keep me honest here, part of the procedure is it just gets recognized in this minutes. And I was actually requesting that the minutes be amended. So down the road, those minutes actually reflect what the vote was. I reached out to Scott and said there was case law. And, and this I learned, and certainly the commissioner's court may know this, but the minutes, uh, there's case law that what the minutes are, oh, certainly document the intent of each commissioner not necessarily what we say but the way the minutes are reflected so because of that i requested an actual agenda item to amend the minutes that then become public and they are future use yeah, the, the, the law is that the court speaks through its minutes and not through the mouths of each of its members uh, and minutes are are the official court record of the commissioner's court so just as a court in order to amend its written records has to do so by a judicial act. So this court has to act as a body to amend the minutes if uh, that is the intended effect. But then the actual the actual minutes from September will not really be amended. Right, there will be an insertion in there to show that we're the correction. Yeah, a copy of these minutes will be inserted with this. And it'll be part of that record. For That's those correct. Minutes. Okay, yes. Okay, I made a motion. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. I make a motion to approve the clerical error in the minute September 26, 16, to correctly reflect the vote. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Five, zero. Thank you. Thank you. Number three, budget amendments to consider and act upon approving budget amendments for the 2016 2017 fiscal year. Question on item two: the radar system was this originally budgeted? No, it's when it was damaged. Move to approve the uh, budget amendments as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. All in favor. Vouchers to consider and act upon the approval of the payment of vouchers processed by the county auditor's office for the period of October 5, 2016 
2016 through October 19, 2016. Check numbers 171281 through Recognize the insurance fund report. Okay. There's nothing unusual. Anything unusual? Are you are you up on the workers' comp thing too? Yes. Along with you and Steve. Steve. Okay. Y'all want to come on up on the and read that. So so recognize on number five insurance report number six workers' compensation <coughs> insurance to hear a report from Steve Lapp with Fairly Consulting Group. Is it fairly or fairly? Fairly, fairly, yeah. fairly consulting group regarding workers' compensation insurance renewal for 2016-17, and to a consider and act upon the recommendation to renew the workers' compensation contract <clears throat> to Texas Political Subdivision for the amount of $169,819 for the period of October 1, 2016, through October 31st, 2017. This fee includes the fee for fairly consulting group LLC as a county broker to be paid separately by the <coughs> county and be to authorize the county jurors to sign the order to bind the workers' compensation addendum and service agreement and necessary contracts as they become available. <coughs> Thank you. Good morning. Okay, good morning. Um, we shot uh, the workers' comp last year. We tried to keep it consistent for three years. Uh, last year was the end of the three year period. Uh, we, we marketed it uh, to, the, to the marketplace and decided to stay with Texas Political Subdivisions, which is the carrier that we were with the prior three years. Um, we were able to secure last year uh, a three year rate commitment uh, with, a, with a pretty considerable reduction from 180 to 164. And uh, this year, those rates are consistent. So our payroll went up, uh, which is the difference in the premium uh, from 164 to 169. And so uh, we are proposing to uh, stay with TPS for another two years this year and one more year and then go out to back to shopping. <clears throat> we did have uh, a pretty rough year of losses this last year, about 269,000 incurred losses. So. Uh, we're we're um, thinking that we're we're in a good position to have that rate guarantee of the, the, the one sixty nine. Mm -hmm. I guess Kate, maybe the only question I'm gonna have and Steve you mentioned the increase in losses over this this last year. I've I've been through on the other end on the employer side, been through workers' comp and appeal process. One of the things I'm just thinking through um, mentally here as we're getting these figures is, are, are we doing well on our documentation within the departments to be able to justify these type of departures, employee departures? A lot of that time that comes to the documentation. This is workers' compensation as it does kind of um, Okay, all right, yeah. all right. perfect. That's right, and, and uh, the county is doing a really good job, but safety-wise, uh, the, 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 the situation this last year was, uh, was one thing that really was uh, a severe situation. Okay, and then is that is evaluated at the insurance committee. Is it where is the is there a committee that evaluates the workers' comp? Not currently, no. Okay, this typically comes through a bidding process and purchasing, uh, and then we hire uh, fairly great statement fairly great consultants. And I think what I'm just mentally thinking through if there's a, a committee, and I'm hearing no, but um, similar to the insurance uh, committee, if we expect an increase in claims, a high increase in claims, it's kind of monitoring the self insured rate. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but it's, it would be very difficult to um, 
gauge future claims, workers' compensation claims by nature are accidents during perception. Yeah, and just to give you a little bit of history, um, 13-14, uh, the year 13-14, we had the total dollar amount was 168,853, and then 14-15, we had a very good year, 35,360. So uh, you can see how much they fluctuate, and then and then this last year, 15-16, we had 216,000 dollars So. Uh, and and we watch those claims to see if there's any trends or anything going on that we can address. But uh, uh, so far, there, there haven't been any trends. It, it is just a, a situation where accidents sometimes happen. You know, at one time we had a safety officer. I think it was through the fire department that went, he just went around to the offices and kind of, you know, just took things over. But well, now, no, it's, we just say, watch out. <laughs> well, the periodically tech comes in yeah. and, and, and rocks through our facilities <laughs> to identify any um, problem areas. Uh, and okay. has, anybody, has anybody, anybody seen anybody from tech come and do that lately? Um, it's been, yeah. And, it, and this would be uh, TPS too. TPS, uh, TPS is, is on the workers' comp side, but but TAC does it on the property and casualty side from, from just a liability. But you identify risk areas that they can apply to both workers' comp and uh, property and casualty. And if you are seeing trends, then you bring that to the judge or to the commissioner's court, how does that work? Usually either to Kay, okay. who's on the workers' comp side, to, okay. to the employee resource, and then she'll direct me to the road and bridge or to the okay. sheriff's department All or right. whatever, I, or just, on the property and casualty side. It's too big. Do you ever have any issues with cost planning that uh, you follow up on? Not with the county, we haven't. Uh, we do, we do with other, with other, other, with other companies that are coming in. Uh, workers' compensation fraud is pretty prevalent, but we haven't, we haven't seen anything. Yeah, so I was just looking if there was a trend, a follow-up. Sounds like that's in place. Okay, thank you. Any motion? To uh, approve the recommendation to remove the workers' compensation contract for the subdivision of the amount of $69,818 from the first quarter of 2001 I do have the original okay. orders by the name of the court. I'd like to get my signatures on the paper. Okay, thank you. Are you going to take any action on item B? Operation? Oh, well, do we need to take action on that? Well, I guess we do. So, why would you give me a, a motion? I make a motion to authorize the Potter County judge to sign an order to find workers' compensation, addendum and service agreement, and necessary contracts. Treasurer's report to recognize the treasurer's report, uh, specifically the monthly report and the quarterly investment. Good morning, I'm just going to combine all this together. Um, first, I'll give you our rates as of this morning. Texas class is 0.84 basis points. Text pool prime was 71 and text pool was 37. And then if you look in your investment report on page six, well, first let's go to page three. And I just want to point out the interest rates there at the bottom. Um, in the general fund, it's showing you it as it increased over those three months, as well as the other funds um, increased as well, but those were Pretty good numbers, so I'm going to bring that to your attention. And then, if you will go to page six. This time last year, now this is the end of our fiscal year, this report reflects like the September 30th. In 2015, we had 17.4 million, 
and this year uh, we had 19.8 million in our general fund. So um, that's it's very good. Our insurance was higher. We've, we've done well all the way around. Okay. I have, a, yes, I have a question, Carrie, and this may not be an appropriate question on this page, page six, but uh, I know last year we were watching the trending as the year ended of how much rolled into the fund balances. Um, and, and there was just a little bit of kind of caution. Is, is there a decrease in that? Is there any opinion on that this year? And it may be too early. The books may have not been officially closed. Well, we still have another month on the line to get everything posted up um, and it will be December 15th, if not July 1st. So this, yes, this is just a snapshot. Okay, all right. I'll follow up with that question in that time. Okay, thank you. But it is looking up for this year. Okay. Okay, so um, then on page nine, it just shows you um, kind of a reflection of, if you look at the graph, um, rates increasing and, and uh, how well that we have done as far as uh, where our investments are this year. Okay, and then finally, page 24, the cedars, the $5 million or $2 million cedars, matured September 29th and we earned $5,492.19 and all of that was put into our A and B general fund where we were earning 75. <clears throat> and so last but not least, I wanted to end with a little bit of a positive note as of September 30th. Last year our earnings, just interest, and I'm just talking about our general fund, we earned $62,310.87. This year, at the end of the fiscal year, end of September, we earned $132,222.66. A little over 51%. And is that just based on um, moving around from account to account? Well, advantage of the interest rates? It did, um, but mainly because, I mean, it's been great this year that people actually wanted our money. So we had some competition out there and we just were able to diversify and so we really did well. Okay. You have a bad back. Yeah, very good. Oh, no, no. Yes. <laughs> we're we're doing it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, number eight, seven court of appeals to consider an action on a construction project for the renovation of the break room and the seven court of appeals office and take any action necessary. Judge, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I am doing well, thank you. My name is Brian Quinn. I'm the Chief Justice of the Court of Appeals, and I want to first start with doing something my freshman speech teacher told me never to do. I want to apologize. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning to come up here. I live in Lily. I checked to make sure the color of my socks match. But I didn't remember to bring a coat until Chris. <laughs> so I apologize for not wearing a coat here. Uh, no sign of disrespect. Bar one does. Where's a favorite thing that they pull? Yeah. Where's a favorite thing that they pull? Yeah. Where is it? got to share it with you. But I do apologize for that. But I want, I am here basically to ask your permission to use some state monies to spend on the courthouse over there. Um, right now we have a smaller, well, a rather small kitchen area, eating area, and we want to expand it. Uh, we talked a little bit with uh, Mike Head about the ideas of, of how to go about doing it. I talked with uh, Lieutenant Judge uh, Hanner a little bit about how to do it. But I thought before we proceed down the line further, get the uh, commissioner's idea, the commissioner's court idea, whether or not they even want us to do that. Uh, but the idea, uh, if you don't, we're just gonna stop it. But we wanted to expand it. Uh, some of our employees, or a number of our employees eat lunch up there, but we have two, two places to eat up there right now. Small table, we want to make it uh, so we can have uh, several tables there. We get uh, permissible by city code, et cetera. We want to be able to put uh, some other appliances in there, maybe a little stove or things like that. Uh, and again, I've talked with Mike about that. Uh, trying to get 
some design ideas as well, but we thought we would get an architect and it was suggested that it was, again, with your approval, that we get the architect that helps uh, the Potter uh, County with their buildings. Judge, how many, uh, here, but, uh, how many employees, uh, including the, uh, the justices, that uh, you do not? Well, we have 19. Uh, uh, Employees basically, so you subtract four justices. Vivian Long, our, our clerk, is back there. I've got to get information from her, so you subtract four from the 19, so 15 people. 15 people. Uh, and Judge, you mentioned state money. Uh, I'm interested state in state money. Okay. So, could you help me understand where that is going to come from? And is there a tentative project cost, anything high level that we're looking at? Okay, uh, with regard to your first question, the money we have, of course, the state gives us the state allotments every every two years, but we also have what is called a Chapter 22 fund, which is based on uh, filing fees that the, the states approved us to collect uh, district wide. And we have 46 counties in our district, so 46 counties are adding a little bit. And that's where the monies are going to come from. Uh, the state money is not going to be any fiscal impact on the county itself. I, I, Anticipate, and we are looking at a cap of fifty thousand dollars, and we have that money. So the county would the county would pay for that would be reimbursed by the state, is that correct? I think that's when we did our other remodelings. That's how we, we looked it out. Uh, the, the county did it, and then we just paid you. It'd be re reimbursed by the seven foot per dealers. Okay. Mr. Ned, do you have any uh, qualms about uh, this expansion? Just a few things they will need to take into consideration. Whenever you do enclose this area over there, uh, it will be affecting the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, uh, fire code, fire detection. There's a lot of elements that will happen because of this being enclosed. I think one of the critical issues that I visited with him about is how do you get where you're going to you bring in an architect right now and let them design this type of work you uh, go out for an RFQ, uh, qualifications for an architect to come in. I would highly recommend that at this point right here, only from the perspective because we're dealing with code issues here. When you start enclosing an area, life safety. Especially with the oven. Right? If, if they do, I'd like to put an oven or a range in. City code don't have an issue with it. I've already visited with them. Fire marshal don't have an issue with it. It's just something we'd have to the procedure, how, how would that work to work together as a committee and draft up the RFQ and take that out? Yes, um, our schedule that maintenance our committee is, and I've got a little bit of so I can have talked about it, is there's already been an RFQ issued and that's where architects was awarded because they were doing the district reports and feasibility studies and they already have a lot of the information. So I am not really sure exactly if we're going to be able to uh, do a uh, separate RFQ just because they would be a fair competitive, a fair proposal because they've done so much of the work. And when I read through the RFQ, it was very, very open to projects. So Mike and I talked about that, and I probably just need to get a legal uh, on it as far as if that would be something. Because the first thought was it was under 50000 But when Mike and I talked, it could be a good possibility it would be greater. And so we thought about a job order contract. Well, uh, we could do that, but we really need to get an architect because that's the reason we don't have any good costs right now. And to the timing, if you know, with the sheriff, admin, law enforcement contracts we're working on right now, I am not really sure exactly when the timeline would be. And I've, I've talked to um, Mike about that also, uh, managing the project as a lot. You know, from the purchasing perspective, it is something that I want to make sure if, uh, what's the best uh, process to go through if we use an existing RFQ we already have to, to get that architect in. And if the architect is available, the architect may not be available when we have to come in. Here's one thing. In 2012, we started the assessment on the building. Architects just came in. They, they went through every inch of that building. They know the ins and outs of the building, what needs to be done, especially to their age. We've got all of that already on file. Not allowed to follow that process to bring in a new architecture that should be in the will that you started. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So that's something that you can look at the procedure and follow to see if you can follow the existing Yes, I looked at it and we hadn't got to this point. That's the reason we needed uh, this process uh, for the judge to come here and Judge Tanner to give us direction to pursue. Because at this point, uh, we haven't contacted, um, I even told Tad, because Tad was with an RQ. Yes, yes. Yeah, no. But I've read over it. Um, I've talked to Carrie a little bit about it just because. As I was thinking about doing an RFQ, they've done so many, so it actually says multiple projects. And one of the uh, buildings that it said was that particular uh, district court's building. So, uh, Ted, you know, wants me to get together and look and see if we can do that. If we can do that, if we can do that. Well, as I understand the agenda item today is to priority the court with conceptually approved these improvements funded by state funding. <coughs> so, then we will move on to the matters that you're discussing. Judge Quinn, if the amount um, is over the 50, that's just the high level benchmark, um, I'm assuming, so I, I certainly need to stop and pause that uh, if the amount is over that, there's enough in this Chapter 22 fund that certainly the state would cover that. Yeah. Okay. And, the, and does the 50,000 include the architect's fee? If 50,000 is rough right now, we would have enough to cover an architect's fee. But I guess that, that was right. Uh, so we're here okay. to start the process. If it comes down like it's, if it looks like it is going to be cost prohibitive, we want to dip it in the bud at the beginning. So we're not going to go down that road. Uh, we do have a set limit what we can spend out of that chapter 22. Uh, 50,000, 75,000 to close within the limit. But uh, it's, it's kind of the baby steps. Uh, so many times when I've worked on my projects, I start at the end and didn't realize no, I should have started at the beginning. <laughs> so uh, this time I'm trying to start at the beginning and, and, and work down. Let me ask this then. Um, we approved this today. Who, who do you propose will do the work? Who will, will it be Mike's people? Will it be someone you hire? Or who will do the actual work? Well, in the midst of discussing it, we would talk with uh, Mike and it would be Mike's people, basically. And I imagine there would be a cost for that. We don't have the main cost. That's what I was looking at and I think he did. You know, one other element whenever you start this is any work done in that building has to be done after business hours, after 5 o'clock, because you have course happening, which district judges may not allow us to make any noise in the building. So any project that you do at that time has to be. And this is one of those things that we need to find out. You know, to work with okay. that to work with the to move forward. I, I do have one other question, and I don't know, Tad, if this is falls in line, but it may be more of a procedural. It's, since it's not budgeted, would that money be, uh, it, will we have to put purchase orders and commitments out to um, the architects? So how would that money be? But we do, Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong, but we do have money for that, correct? It was just, we could just charge it to a receipt for the role that we can get the rights in the space. We know it's a problem. What happened to me is it was about a year, a little over a year ago, you gave approval to us to build an office in the clerk's office. Uh, or maybe as long as an enclosed area space. And I was envisioning, uh, I was envisioning following the same procedure. Uh, we were paying you, and I can't remember all the steps that happened. Uh, before that, but we ended up paying you guys to do it. We, you guys are the ones that did it. Excuse me for saying you guys, but, but uh, the county is the one that did it, and we, we paid you. I was thinking about the those two lines. So you're just asking for approval to conceptually move forward and try to get this process started. And we will keep you most definitely in the loop if we do get approval to start the okay. uh, proceeding down the path. I make a motion that we approve a conceptual rendering and cost review, you might call it that, um, for a construction project for the renovation of the big break room at the Seventh Court of Appeals Office. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. I'll have to raise your right hand. Um, so thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Break room. 
Humans to dogs, number nine. Narcotics canines. Consider an act upon the retirement of Paris. A narcotic canine who has reached the end of her career and allow her to live out her life with Deputy Dustin Lansbury, who will provide proper care and relieve the county of costs for care for her. First job call, please. This is just, uh, it's normal for the uh, canines to be retired to the county handlers. Um, Paris was diagnosed with cancer a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. He's had surgery on that. Uh, I don't know if we'll come back or she does. They'll probably be six months. She's still out there. <clears throat> so it's, and she has her, she's six, seven years old, which is really a, a life expense to have a family canine. Looking for another dog, and we actually got a deal on that. Went through the through the finances uh, <coughs> uh, Had one over there. We thought we were going to get it pretty cheap, but it turned out to be about five or six years old. And when I went over there, I found another one that was for a two-year-old. Have one a little bit extensively cheaper than having this and we went off to the pay on school for the court of the And that also depends on our court capacity. Okay. Chair, the only question I have is as we release the the canine, is there any liability for the for the dog? And I, I mean I I equate them actually to our actual deputies. I mean they're on force that's, and that's why we're doing that. Okay. Okay. And that dog has lived with him for the last four years anyway. I mean, it's a family dog, it's short work. But we don't want to just give that dog out to somebody outside of law enforcement. So. Okay. I'll we'll make a motion to retire Paris and uh, allow Deputy Dan, Dan uh, Dustin Landberg to uh, take care of his animal. Okay. Motion and a second. All favor, raise your hand. Zero. Okay, number 10, fire station number five to consider an act on the proposed restoration of fire station five. Yes. Good morning. How are y'all? Good. We have uh, finished with the insurance. We have their proposed settlement on the they, the insurance is divided the claim into two parts on, the, on what we're doing for the building. They have the building itself, and they've given us what they think is their final number for that. And then there, we have contents that we're going to be building all the furnishings and everything else that was inside. And that one is wide open until we're back in the building and settle back in and we find out everything as we get the stuff back from Surf Pro. And, move everything back in the building to find out what was damaged and what we don't have and what we do have. Uh, the contents part of it right now, we talked with the insurance people, and we've got it estimated at probably about $120,000 before we get done with it. They did the, uh, the part for the building. They worked it out to be two hundred and twelve. $1,912.83. We took that amount of money and we've been looking at the building. In our building plan, our update plan for the fire stations, uh, one of the items was to remodel this building to make it much more habitable for our volunteers. Uh, it was planned to be done farther down the list, but my own opinion and in talking to uh, several different officials, most different officials I've talked to, agree that this is the time to do the remodel, not to wait until some point in the future. If we build it back now, um, then we'd be turning around and spending a similar amount of money or more several years from now to do the same thing that we can do now. If we did the remodel, what would be the lifespan of that building? When we did six, as far as I know, Station Six is 50 years old. Uh, this building's 20. I don't know what lifespan 
properly cared for metal metal building like that, I don't know what the lifespan is on. It's very long. Um, I know that Station Six, before we started it, we looked at the we had several people come in look at the structural steel of the building and at the building itself and the foundation. It's 50 years old and everybody was like, you've got another 20 or 30 year probably at least out of it. This building is approaching 20. I would expect we've got another 30 or 40 years when we're out of it also. Captain, you don't foresee this as an opportunity to really have a deep conversation if the new $2 million fire station could be the next central station? Even if it, we did not build it for that, it does not have enough office space to house us. It only has three offices in it. We have four people and we still have to have room for the volunteers to have offices. <laughs> Even if we did that, this building still got to be rebuilt and the configuration it was in is not great for the volunteers. When the building was designed originally, it had no intention. It was not built with volunteers at all in mind. And it was built, I started in, in May and they broke ground for it on August. And none of the people that are around now had any input on this building. I, just, I mean, I just still go back to, we have a brand new $2 million facility, state of the art, unmanned with the actual, you know, Potter County employee staff. And we got those questions. I got those questions at the We've been using, we did too. And we're using it pretty regularly. Uh, we've had, I've been out there four or five times now with meetings besides other things that we're doing out there. It's getting used quite a bit. I guess we should, I'm sorry, I guess we should, what you're referring to is probably, you know, the <coughs> Central versus just uh, uh, the the new board that was approached for the building. Well, our station that can be used. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I think that was what you were saying. Yeah, that's what we call right. it, this particular station. All right, this building, uh, the location that we're in currently. Actually, for us to be in all day long is geographically and with our call by the way it is at this time, it's still a better location than three. The, the considerations when we built three was not, we never, I guess maybe we did talk about moving there, but it was never part of the plan with that building for us to move and be stationed out of that building. Um, we can if we can move a little bit farther if we ever did build another if we were built a headquarters station for us and we need to be west some but not quite that far the majority of our calls are still from uh, around western to the east and where the calls are makes a big difference to us because of response times and we where are you projecting the difference in this amount to come from since it's we're coming out of capital I've talked with Carrie about that, and she said that will come out of capital. Okay. Well, I've just unfortunately had a fire, and this came up this this year right after we finished another station. But to me, it makes sense to make a ride when we've got the basic uh, funds to do the major part of the work and uh, I wish we didn't have to but I, I really think to keep up with the growth of our county and the needs that we have that we, we should do this. Carrie as it relates to the capital what account is um, Pat referencing? We had money set aside for Something they know that Mr. Lewis is going to work on and since that project might happen, we're going to have repairs. Judge Jim, so it comes out of capital, yeah. I'd love to hear it. It comes out of capital projects, correct? Correct. Is there any way, I, I, and I hate, to, I hate to say this out loud, but is there any way at all you can quantify what's on what you're saying here and, and come down on the cost a little bit by not? 
the the fitness room actually the cost of the fitness room is a wall. Do you have the fitness equipment in there? The equipment we have is the only equipment there? that we have in there now. There's no there's no money to buy any fitness equipment in this project in this project. That's just a wall. Yes, ma'am. We have made a, a space and we put the flooring in it uh, to do that. There's very little cost involved in it. Our um, the insurance people the insurance people um, went back and they've come up with the number that they're paying to build it back at sixty thousand dollars. The uh, we went through the job order, the JLC, and their cost was at 142, um, and that's a pretty significant difference to me. So you're asking just, for an additional 155,000. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and who's going to do the work? Um, the general, the general work will be done by town, and then more will do the electrical work. Allen's Tri-State will do the plumbing and the HVAC. And we have a proposal. We're putting a fire alarm in, which is six thousand dollars for this proposal. And we have a, a bid on it right now. But I'm talking to Vicki. We're going to decide exactly what's going to happen with that bid. Okay, so this one fifty-five includes all of that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It includes all. And to do this, to do this project, I went all the way back to the beginning of the project. I worked with Gary and Vicki. Ginger, and we've gotten all of the costs that have been involved with this project so far. Trying to detail all of those and list them against that insurance settlement, so that when we're done, we're done. There's not going to be any additional money. There's twenty-five thousand dollars contingent project contingency, which is approximately the ten percent, which is pretty standard for what we do with the county. Um, and when I did furnishings to put back in the building. Uh, there's a, a, a four thousand dollar contingent contingency i guess is the word to put it in that because we don't know what we're going to find when we get back in in this new scope pack are there any uh i'm sure i can call it the right thing but a fire suppression or fire detection is probably the word yes, we are putting a fire detection system in the uh, main thing we're doing judges we're taking out is you've been in the building um, where some of the offices are now we're actually making some of the offices smaller which includes mine we're making them a little bit smaller we're going to take out where the classroom was and we're going to take the area that comes out of where our, that we made our offices smaller we're going to make it a big wide open crew area similar to what we had at three um, part of it got dictated by the fact that we put the kitchen, I think what we're done, somebody's gonna look at it and go, that's kind of a strange way to do your building, but we left the kitchen area with the sink and the, all of that would stay in the same spot in consideration of how much it costs to move plumbing. <laughs> We've tried to look at everything we can on this. We're going to upgrade the, this includes the, the areas we're gonna divide. The, right now the shower in the building when you go in the men's room, it's one huge room. It's the men's bathroom and it's the shower. We're going to build a wall there and add a door so that the shower becomes a separate private room. So it's a unisex shower, uh, make it more accommodating for the women. Because we have women on this station, and it's just not a very easy way to do it. If you're going to go in and take a, if the woman wants to take a shower, she puts a note on the door and hope everybody sees it, or get somebody to guard the door which it hasn't been a problem, but I can understand that it's not the most comfortable place in the world to take a shower. Uh, we're gonna upgrade the, we're gonna put uh, tile on the walls and try to make the building look modern as we do it. Okay, I'm assuming that this did not come to budget because you didn't know the time. No, we did not. Okay. So we take that out and help the projects. I mean, I'd like to get your opinion as our, our, our last year here of our fiscal year. We're very early in the year, and I, I just I can see something stewing over there. 
participating in the motion and second all in favor raise your hand. Five zero, thank you. We do thank you second that we did not get that Second. Okay, number eleven, Water County Burn Bay. Consider an active office of the question. Burn Bay Burn Bay. What is the index of burn bay? I was attending to this morning and I ran out of time this morning. It's pretty dry out here. It is dry. We are getting typically with us when our fire season starts, we start getting barnage fires. In a while we run a lot of small barnage fires when they get to where they can get into the fields and home. So Tad, Scott, can I do this without the, the index, without all the index? So yeah, the order that the form order I'm here to you is the find based on the finding of dry conditions and okay. aggravate the possibility of fire to account for that's the alternative right outside of the Okay. And we're roughly three to four hundred degrees that the map is shown. I didn't get the actual number, but the color is shown. Three to four hundred degrees. For 90 days, you know, using yes. vehicles. You have the ability to take them out. Thank you. 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 Number 12, Santa Fe Historical Railway Museum. Consider next upon the recommendation for Heath Acker to be appointed to the board of directors of Santa Fe Historical Railway. Mr. Wolfram, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank Good. you. For the record, I'm Walter Wolfram. I'm president of the Santa Fe Railroad, excuse me, Santa Fe Historical Railroad Museum. You will recall that this is a Potter County project that we started some ten and a half years ago. We created a 501c3 corporation to operate the museum. The tie, specific tie to the county is that I make a recommendation to any board members, to the county judge, the county judge makes the appointment, and that appointment then is passed on by this commissioner's court. We had a vacancy come by our beloved Jim Thompson who passed away unexpectedly and left us with the vacancy. We always had that vacancy that the board member filled by a staff from the Emerald National Bank. I request the Emerald National Bank to come forward and they've been gracious to do so. They recommended to us Keith Hackard, who's here with me, is assistant vice president of the Emerald National Bank and has agreed to serve. I've submitted his name to the judge and as I understand it, she has made the appointment and what we're here to do today is to see if you approve the appointment. Just curious, Mr. Wilkerman, and uh, certainly have no objections to who you are recommending and, and the interest is coming from. But why am I National Bank for that position? Judge, you're going to ask me to expose the political power of you in the world <laughs> that I have. <laughs> can, I, can I quit now? <laughs> <laughs> we have what is called a power board, and when we ask for a, let me tell you how those things are important. We ask for a fundraising team and they found out who our board was and they accepted the telephone rather than taking months to make the decision. That's why these things are done and I have met Mr. Stacker and he's gracious, it's fun to be around, interested in our project. I have one other thing to tell you, we have reason to believe that we're like 98% that we will put the railroad museum in the railroad station. It's important that each body in this room, if you're a Potter County resident, that you, uh, excuse me, a city Ramona resident, that you vote in the bond issue, that you vote for Proposition 3, because it has $7.3 million in it to renovate the railroad station. And that's money that our organization doesn't have to raise. So I hope you'll go out and support for that. Both the rest of them too. But so, so basically the, the money for this is coming from the proposed proposition if it passes. Yes, if it does not, what is your plan? We will start raising the money. You'll raise the money. Judge, and I would be cautious. To my knowledge, there has not been any city council decision 
no, um, no. for that. So I'm certainly it's appropriate if you know you're talking about discussions that might be happening. I know the actual facility, the infrastructure is what I've seen on the bond, but I've not seen any city council decision or even debate or deliberation that that is the intent. So I just want to make sure to clarify that because I, I certainly 100% of my precinct is in the in the city proper. So I, I watch that city agenda. And I'm sure we're waiting on the results. Right. I'm sure we're waiting on the results of the proposition. That's true. I'm assuming it's been waiting on before they discuss it. So, um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, do you have any other questions? I have uh, several questions, okay. Judge, if I may. Sure. Um, so, Mr. Wolfram, and I, I'm going back from mental notes about a year ago this time. The last records I have when you addressed the court was that the, the entity, the nonprofit, was in its final stages within two months of being dissolved. Yes, that's correct. Is that still correct? It no, is, okay, no, we so had, can you help because, me get up to speed? Because of the city election mm -hmm. last year, we picked up sufficient support. What do you call this back door? We picked okay. up support that we are we in business and intend to be there. We, we believe that we have the support for the uh, not only there, from, but also in the administration. Museum in there. A study was made by the administration as to what the highest and best use of the railroad station that came down that was for, for a museum. Okay, so this is city owned. The, the depot is owned by the city. Yes. Owned by the city. Mm -hmm. And it will be funded by the city. If the bond issue passes. If the bond issue passes. So the only thing that we are doing as a court is supporting Mr. Ackerman. That's all. You're filling a vacancy on that floor. Okay. I do have two more questions. Okay. Be I just would be interested to know who the other board members are and maybe what your meeting sequence is. Oh my. Is. And this is uh, all, you know, we... Ron, Ronnie Swindell, Arna Reynolds, Roger Williams, Corey Dupreeze, Sloan Crutcher. And how often do you meet with Mr. Wolfram? We've been meeting about, oh, and Bob, Bobby uh, Lee. Okay. We've been meeting about once every three months, just kind of get together and fellowship and encourage each other. And as the, the bylaws or the nonprofit is set up, Potter County has how many seats on there that we appoint or just this you one? You appoint all of them. Um, and then the Every seat that gets there is appointed by the county judge subject to the approval of the court. Are there term limits on those appointments? No. Well, two years and they stay on until their successor has to qualify. And since we've not had any successors, our qualification to stay on. So these uh, are the original or these are the original board members? No. Okay. You've had several. Um, we've had many changes and Fred was well, we've had two Catastrophic illnesses and two deaths. And, uh, you sure you would do this? You should have That was the first thing he asked me. <laughs> I warned him that this is yeah. a desperate place to get on. <laughs> I told him he needed to call his life insurance company. <laughs> 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 I just know that when we had several questions as a county in, in the um, expenditures, if you will, I just don't remember having any board members to actually work with. I mean, and certainly you represented the museum and addressed the board with the concerns at that time, but I just don't remember having any board members to reach out to. So, I'm, Commissioner Ron, I know you have the most tenure on this board. Uh, I've been on five years now, certainly Commissioner Kelly as well. This is the first appointment I've seen, so I'm just wondering about y'all's perspective of if you've seen appointments on this board before. I have. Uh, yes. But not in this position. No. <laughs> when uh, Judge Ware was here, we had, we had some replacements. Red Red. So the judge makes those appointments? Judge, I make the recommendation to the judge. <laughs> the judge makes the appointment and you all give advice and consent, I think, is the technical way. That's interesting. You know, we that would have been proud. That's the point. So I just got the letter. Just like y'all did. Yeah. So for a very new process, certainly the commissioners are not uh, appointed to this board often. So thank you for your willingness to serve. But we 
Yeah, good luck to you. <laughs> Go to the doctor. Oh, yeah. I asked you for permission to let me take a lack of your policy. You wouldn't let me do that. Okay, I make a motion that we, we appoint Keith Acker to the Board of Directors of Santa Fe Historical Royal Museum. Second, all in favor, raise your hand. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, number 13, Prairie South Estates number one to consider an act upon a plat of Prairie South Estates number one. Hey, Kitty Axon. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm wondering. Good. Good morning. Prairie South Estates is a residential 167 lot subdivision that we're looking for approval with today. Uh, it lies on the south side of uh, I-40, uh, east of uh, Simmons Road. It basically takes half of a section. We're running from I-40 to the county line. That's where we're about subdivision. And where is that, I'm sorry, you mentioned that. I was trying to write it down, but I didn't get it. It's on the east side, or excuse me, on the south side of I-40. Okay. And Simmons Roads, which is the main main north south through Bushland, from there going east. And Commissioner Church, you've been involved in this in the city. Well, no, but uh, my only uh, concern out there, and when I get calls, is on drainage. Yes, sir. So. Uh, uh, Bill Thomas is handling the drainage on this uh, as the engineer. Uh, go east out to that fly lake. That where the city drains to now? I think the majority of it is. Um, I know they've got, um, Bill Thomas has a drainage package put together of what is draining to where. I think this, this piece actually breaks into part of it drains back to the east, not up to I-40, and then part of it drains north to I-40 down that ditch that's this existing. Sebastian, have you been involved on the roads and making sure they're going to meet the standards with our new? Well, once they start, yes, I will. Okay. Yeah. I'll lean on Commissioner Church and the judge if there's concerns. All, all, all I need to know is we need to do redo this order that stated for last for our last meeting. Aren't you bring a new one with you? <laughs> okay, that's fine. We'll do it. We'll, do it. we'll fix it. Okay. Well, I just. Uh, I don't have a concern on that. I'd like to see development. I want to see growth. And I wish Bushman would at some point consider maybe incorporating so Because uh, a lot of people come out here and want the same service they get in town. And so then it's adding this type of big thing up, whether it's for streets, fire, EMG, whatever, leasing, all of it uh, comes to us. So anyway. I don't know how philosophically we can get the folks out there to start considering that, but um, we might not be able to have the services they're tied sometimes. So, but I'm all in favor of the development. How many residents? There's 167 lots that, that we're planning right now. The initial run of, of uh, lots opening is somewhere in the neighborhood of 70. That's the, the that's the initial uh, what we're what the developers pushing to have open by spring, start building houses on. What's the long range of price point? I have no idea. I really don't. This is all in Potter County. This is all in Potter County, yes, ma'am. We we use the Potter County line as the boundary line <laughs> for the uh, south side of this. Okay, that's called growth, my friends. That's good. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I just want to say one thing. Uh, once they open this development. We already have issues with traffic for the school there. We've had several meetings, so just be prepared to get the phone call. One in and one out. Right, that's that's right. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah TechStot's uh, looking into that because it's really a TechStot traffic flow problem on the interstate and, and the frontage roads. Right now, those two frontage roads are two way. And, uh, there's a possibility they'll have to change those to one way. We, we, did, lines work. we dedicated additional right-of-way via this plan um, along Simmons so that 
in case the road ever does need to be widened, no one has to purchase that. Uh, it's dedicated via this. It's, we only have one entrance onto the front road to try to mitigate any more issues that are already there. A lot of land on I 40 East as well. We've got to do that to you. Go on the East and take that old trader house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> I move that um, we approve the uh, very South State Suite of Number One Five. Second. Have a motion and second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get, I'll get this signed to you today and we'll do the order for you. Thank you. Panel 14, Potter County Extension Office to hear an update regarding activity hosted by the Potter County Extension Office. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Kelly. She's a guest. Yes, I have a guest. I'll speak a little bit today. Lots of money. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Thank you again for this opportunity to allow us to share our programming efforts. Um, I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Family and Consumer Science Agent for AgriLife. And I have a guest today, Crystal. I'll, I'll go ahead and start and then I'll let Crystal share her story. Habitat for Humanity builds homes uh, because they believe that everyone everywhere should have a safe, healthy, affordable place to call home. AgriLife Extension has been partnering with uh, Habitat for Humanity since January of 2013. And uh, basically, I provide the educational component for the families that are waiting in line to get homes. And this education component helps families to uh, help themselves. I provide educational financial stability classes and financial wellness classes to the families throughout the year. Uh, families apply to receive homes and a selection committee um, selects them and they're approved by the Habitat Board. So uh, one thing I like to say is that the families actually purchase their homes. A lot of people don't realize this. I know that Crystal has been asked, you know, you know, they tell Crystal, oh, will you be in a free home? It's not a free home. They purchase their homes, they're not given to them. They qualify through income, need for housing, willingness to put in the equity sweat hours, the willingness to attend classes, which are the classes that I provide, and the willingness to maintain their stable jobs and income. Currently, we were told that there are over 400 families on the wait list. Uh, once the families are selected, they put a down payment, they begin to attend the classes. The classes that I have, um, that I provide, are held every Thursday evening at the Habitat, and these are year round. Every Thursday night, we get together and we learn something new. I begin in January and I facilitate and teach Dave Ramsey to the family, and that is from January through May, and they attend every Thursday night. Each family must attend and complete the Dave Ramsey Financial um, Freedom Financial Peace University course. So Crystal has attended that and completed that course. In the summer, I teach stretching food dollars and hands-on cooking to the families to teach them how to um, provide their family affordable, healthy meal options. And then currently right now we kicked off the financial stability and financial wellness classes where we come together and partner with community uh, people in the community. For example, Panhandle Greenhouse has come out and taught the families, the Emerald Fire Department, TxDOT, uh, the Federal Credit Union has come out, we have master gardeners, we have home inspectors, and different people in the community to share their expertise and offer resources to our families. And that is going on currently every Thursday night. I also come in and teach um, teach them how to prepare a healthy holiday meal on a limited income and provide, uh, make some homemade holiday gifts because gift giving can be stressful as well for people on a budget. So we'll be doing that as well. So we just make sure that families are increasing their knowledge and skills in all area of financial stability and uh, wellness so that they can build long-term financial security and break the cycle of poverty. Crystal is one of our families who is qualified to have a home built for her. She uh, has been attending my classes since January. She's a hardworking mother of three beautiful daughters. Two of them are in high school and attend Caprot. All of them attend the classes, which is really nice. If you see in your folder, there are some photos of Crystal and her daughters. And um, these are her daughters, the two right here. And so they attend the classes together and that makes it really special. So I enjoyed that and I thought these pictures would portray a story. Also, uh, I'd like you to see that one of the homes that's been built 
And uh, Crystal and I were at this home blessing. These are really needed. You have never attended a home blessing. I think most, some of you have. And so they, uh, Crystal also helped build this home. They, they have to the help on the weekends. I can put in those hours. I'm just gonna let Crystal share a few things, share her story, and I'll let her come up here and just talk a little bit about what she's learned and then if you all have any questions. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I have right now because I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm like, okay, good at talking to them. I told you that. Hello, I'm Chris Ragnar, and I have attended Habitat classes with Elizabeth um, since January. I work as a massage therapist, and I have two, two daughters in high school at a camp rock. I'm grateful for Habitat and this, and the opportunity they have given me to be able to provide a nice home for my family. I'm sorry, I'm just emotional. Okay. And this is important to me. I have really enjoyed the classes. Um, and learning new things. I was hesitant about learning. I was hesitant about learning and um, some of the things being taught, I just, I didn't know if I could really incorporate those things to my life. And um, after the classes and you know, she makes it look e easy and teaches us um, a lot of stuff. And, um, I'm more open to new things now. Um, I'm really amazed how far a little bit can go food um, wise. Like she shows us um, there's a lot of small portions and how we can make a big meal out of that. And that's really kind of what I'm taking from that. So um, I cook more for my family and I watch my spending on un unnecessary items. Um, I enjoy the day around this class and um, I now budget my finances and I stretch my food dollars um, yeah, less. I'm more aware of my portions and healthy eating and we use the recipes that show us in class. Um, I'm grateful for her time and her patience. Um, she's a good teacher. She's a really great teacher. Um, she's outstanding and I honestly feel like she cares about every one of us in her class. Um, I really look forward to all the classes that she teaches us. And I uh, know, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, <laughs> All I ever wanted was a home for my kids, not a house, a home. And um, I still haven't got it yet, but we're in the process. And I'm really grateful for everything that I've learned. Crystal, when are you going to move in? Well, they do it um, <coughs> as far as our sweat equity. There's four families, and um, whoever finishes their hours first and puts the down payment down, that's what order they build the house. Your hours are going to finish first. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, me and my daughters, well, I have custody of my, my niece, so I consider her my daughter. She's a baby. And, but, so my two older daughters, we do, um, we go out to the job site and we, you know, try to put in as many hours. Where's, where's the house going to be? Um, it's on the east side. At Glenwood? Uh, I don't know what part that is. So right by the habitat is it? You oh, yeah. 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 That's where they're building that house. So you're being by Christmas? No, it'll be uh, by next summer. Yeah, but we'll, I don't think it'll be. I don't know, sometime next year. <laughs> yeah, it'll be yeah, by next, next year. year. We're putting in our hours, and um, I'm just really grateful. Like, because being a uh, massage therapist, I'm a boy, um, I wouldn't qualify for a traditional loan. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Keep up the hard work, okay? Nice, nice job. Thank you very much. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Scott, for allowing me to put these of agenda course. items on. Um, you know, there's a lot happening in our community, and I know we get busy with the business side of it, and I think it's great to see this time. Thank you. I have a 15 neighborhood planning to provide an update on the city county neighborhood planning process. Uh, we had a meeting this past Thursday, um, a couple of dates that I want to make sure the commissioner's court is aware of. Uh, this Thursday, October 27th at 5.30 is a, what they're calling a neighborhood community validation workshop. And so they're, they're at the same location at the um, United Citizens Forum. Uh, will have the cities in the final stages of their development initiative, I guess, a plan that the residents have become a part of. Another date that I want to make sure that the Commissioner's Court is aware of is in December, December 20th 
and offering updates to as, as these dates continue to get closer. But we are expecting a city council decision or a, an item to be on for discussion and decision for the actual plan that gets drafted because the end result is that will become an addendum to the city strategic plan. So the city will take action on that. I will follow up with an action for the commissioner's court to just recognize it just so we have the actual document too for our records. Um, I know that we have seen a draft of some of the finances um, that, that we had expected as a part of the contractual interlocal agreement. So we may see that on an agenda item coming up. But we continue to meet once a month just as a little court committee. But we are evolving or expecting around January uh, after the holidays for the next one to start up. Uh, which is the body of location. And then now that the city department, the planning and zoning is fully staffed, they have a new director and some new planners, they're expecting to kind of pick up a little steam for the next next location. I want to share that update. Any questions? <coughs> Thank you. Okay, number 16, local government corporation to provide an update on that. Uh, the local government corporation met last week as well, last Wednesday. One of the big items is new officers that were elected. So just as a matter of record, I thought it was important that you know who the officers are. Of course, we have an ex officio, ex officio seat. President is Sonny Hodge Campbell. Uh, Vice President is William Biggs. The treasurer is Michelle Bonner, who, who works certainly with the city as well, fills that role, and then the secretary, Francis Gibbs. So those new officers were elected at what was called the annual meeting last week. A couple of project updates. The TxDOT streetscape project starting roughly February of 2017. Parking garage is about 50% construction completed. Um, they're still working on the agreement for the retail space. So you should see that here coming up uh, in the next couple of months. And then um, the demolition is scheduled to occur we say November 8th of Coca-Cola property as we know it today, approximately four to five weeks for that project. So it will start to look very different once that property goes down. Um, there's a lot of questions from the, well, not a lot of questions, there's a, a question from the audience that we, we often get about the baseball team and is there an update? And there was not an update shared at that meeting. So as I get those, I like to make sure the whole point is informed. What is the uh, uh, plan, uh, plan D? Uh, Commissioner, I don't know that I am the person to, to give you what the plan B is, nor do I am I privy to that knowledge. I would I would imagine that like any any governing body, we would always be looking at the A and the B and the C and what that looks like. But nothing that's been shared with, with me or publicly of what that might be, but that certainly is a question that you know is coming up. <laughs> okay, thank you. Number 17. County Commissioner of Continuing Education to recognize the County Commissioner of 2019 Continuing Education Hours, pursuant to Section 81.2225 of the Local Government Code. County Commissioner must complete the minimum of 16 continuing education hours this year. And that is still recognized. Number 18, Interlocal Agreement Addendum, Texas Conference of Urban County, Section 4. Consider an act upon approval of an addendum to the agreement. Texas Conference of Urban Counties for 2017 and to authorize the county judge to sign the agreement. Is that you, Gary, or is that you, Jason? Do you have a point to talk about that? Got my hand. It's just the annual. For Randall? For Randall, yes. Well, just for the record, Randall got up and talk. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't have to. Is there anything you need to know about? Is there any other changes? I don't know there are any changes that I'm aware of. No. Um, Judge, there was one thing after Randall spoke, one of the questions I had asked him was on the maintenance amount, the yearly fee. Um, and so he did follow up with a report that I saved for budget time next year, but it is something we need to watch as a governing body for budgets. There is no 2% increase per year. There is a lot of open-endedness. And so I recognize that was year one of the contract, so we'll see where the chips fall. But I don't know if this agreement falls in line with what the annual maintenance is. On the, is it the same structure, Carrie? Do you know? I would assume it's the same structure, Jason. They have to type in, but in this budget, he had actually only allowed 84000 in county maintenance. So I would assume that the additional is that. Okay. 
Randall was able to provide a report, like a breakdown um, of what other counties have done. I don't know if that can be accomplished for this or if it's included with this. Do you know, Carrie, if this is separate? I can call this. Okay. It's just, it's so new and that um, annual maintenance amount is not capped like a 2% and 3% on a lot of our software agreements. This one is very different and can catch us by surprise if we're not watching that. So that is my only question, Judge. Okay. Thank you. All right, give me a motion to approve. Motion and a second on the table right here. All opposed? See, all three of us sign my feeling. All three of us sign my Number 19 equipment purchase to consider a major cost purchase in the 2017 RAM 2500. Three four by four from Great Pine Dodge Price Ranch, nine hundred thirty one thousand six hundred eighty eight dollars, utilizing the Bible contract from four three zero dash one three. The funds were budgeted in twenty sixteen for the seventeenth fiscal year. And Nick, you are here to talk about that. I do know that we're going to put it over. Yes, sir. But we have some money in the, in the budget anyway for that, so I don't see a problem. Okay. We actually had something from Road and Bridge that came in under. So it's kind of balancing out. That's unusual. That's a goal. Nothing gets over the range. Unusual getting anything. Okay. Is there anything, Vicki, did you want to add anything to this? Or? No, that's exactly what I meant. It's kind of talk to Carrie. It's still about the equipment, all the budget. Sometimes that happens at the end of years. Plus, they added an option, right? You could a couple options change. And it's a 2017 you've got price speed budget for 2017. Sixteen. What are your options that change? Be interesting. Mm -hmm. No, it's just a, it was just a matter of ten. Oh, okay, fifty dollars. Okay, I think we didn't have that on the original. That was a 2016 version, which was good. Now it's a 2017. 2017. Yes. 16 was set on its lot when we called prior to uh, setting the budget last year. We just had it and actually gave us that cost. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Purchase for the 2017 Ram 2500 crew, 2500 crew, 4x4 for the Great Pine Dodge price for Jeep in the amount of $31,688. Utilizing the by board contract number 430 13, funds budgeted in 2016 2017. Have a mission. Have a mission. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, Great Thank you. Yes, Number 20 to hear a report on the various public county projects. Matt, do you have something for us? The uh, Santa Fe elevator modernization project, uh, the shift earlier that we had back in July, we completed the final inspection with the state this past Friday. Everything's good. So hopefully within this week, we'll be turning part number two back over to the public along with car number four being the freight elevator car back over to us the original completion uh substantial november the first so starting november the second five hundred dollars a day the day of damages will be forced upon them they anticipate 17 weeks to complete the project which will put you at february 28th of next year at five hundred dollars a day we can make the fire session that we had it all worked out. Uh, Sheriff's Department project, we're currently out to bid on the law enforcement. Uh, fire Station 3 project, as you're aware, has been completed. We're waiting to close out documents for the general contractor on that. And the fairgrounds projects on the hill. We finally finished the final inspection on them last Thursday. We're 100% complete. Close out documents should be coming in. This week, if we can get that final How long have you been waiting to say that? Since May 2013. The Santa Fe Terracotta Project. 
We completed that last week. It's 100% complete. Uh, we've got all of our painting and our ceilings put on up there. So that's another project. Uh, one question I do have, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, uh, on the county courthouse warranty claims, have you heard anything from Mr. Robert Moss? Uh, I have not. I have not heard anything from him. So we'll be proceeding with that. Okay. okay. That is it. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Number 21, employment items to consider next from the following employment items and collections. Employment of Helen Diaz Martinez as deputy part time. Our replacement of Francis Magley, effective October 10, 2016. And then in road and wage determination of Jason Griffin. Summer Moore, effective October 27, determination of Jesse Martinez. Summer Moore, effective on October 27. And the discharge termination of Teddy Moody as Summer Moore, effective October 27, 2016. And there's a motion for all of these. So moved. Mr. Kent. And a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Five zero. Thank you. Jail report today is 568 people in our jail. Um, eight, 98 of those are female, six of those are in children's, and the percentage is 81% of felons and 13% of Do we have any county insurance item? No, we didn't. No, executive session. Any agenda items for next time? We attended the uh, Texas County. Judges and Commissioners Association meeting in Dallas a couple weeks ago. Of course, uh, as all of you know, we've got a uh, legislative session coming up. And the association is asking each county to consider three resolutions in support of issues that uh, the association has deemed as our top issues for the session. I'd like to present them next time and see if we want to uh, pass them. They've asked every candidate to do it. At this point, only 67 candidates have responded. So I think uh, it'd be good if we give our association some support. But anyway, the three issues are state funds for indigent, indigent criminal defense. We've talked about that before. We've talked every, every time, it seems like, about the unfunded mandates. And the third one, which is a big one, and we ought to all be concerned about that no matter who we are in the local government, and that's opposition to appraisal caps and revenue caps that are being uh, pushed. So, uh, anyway, I'll be happy to bring that to the next meeting. Okay. Right. Okay, anything else? Nothing? There's nothing else we are adjourned.